everyone welcome to another video i haven't done a question and answer in a long long time and i used to do instagram q and a's all the time by the way this table i'm sitting on is the one i just made me and one of my friends uh, made this table like during the weekend so it is pretty cool let's see what all questions we have and let's just talk about it i know you guys had a lot of questions and I'm always appreciative of the questions and I'm here to answer them. Uh, let's start with the first one. How to manage money with a 75,000 salary. When I started my career, I was on a low, low salary. Construction managers do not make that much money and I was on a low, low salary. So my advice to you would be prioritize like finishing up your loan as quickly as possible. So let's say 75K will leave you around 3,500 maybe or maybe $4,000 in your account after taxes and any savings account you're doing. So 4,000, keep your monthly expenses under 1,500 or around 1,500, even 2,000, and then send the other 2,000 back to home. There's no reason for you to keep those 2,000 here. Maybe create an emergency fund for three months or even two months. You know, with so many friends of ours around, we don't usually need the emergency fund that much but in case you do need it you have it so after spending on your living expenses uh, you have 2000 bucks and pay your loan back as quickly as possible i'm gonna leave a link of a video which i shot recently with a student uh, from pace university who was making around sixty thousand dollars and she was able to pay her loan back within a year so you should watch that video Another question, how to overcome inferiority complex? Okay, we all face inferiority complex or imposter syndrome at one point of uh, the time or some time other, right? We all face that issue in our lives. I even face inferiority, inferiority complex. Even now, sometimes it's hardly there because I know who I am and what I've done. But it was very common when I was you know, just graduated or even when I was coming into Purdue because this other person's smarter than me, this person's doing better than me. That imposter syndrome and inferiority complex will always be there, but just remember who you are as a person and just remember how, how much hard work you have put in to be where you are right now. When you remember that hard work, I think it makes it much easier for you to subside that complex and like do what you want to do. Is it okay to go with cash only as a person who's flying for the first time? I didn't opt for Forex card. Cash is great. Cash is definitely the king. Cash will work everywhere. But the reason why I always recommend Forex card is so that in case you lose your cash, in case your bags get stolen, you still have that Forex card. And Forex card money is safe, right? Taking $1,500 cash, it's not as unsafe, but like any amount of cash I carry, I always fear like what will happen. And Forex card and credit cards and debit cards, you can always call the bank and shut it off. Let's say you're taking $1,000, maybe take, you know, $700 cash and $300 Forex card. I will also link another product which is really useful for international students. It's called Zolve. Zolve gives you an access to a bank account even before you go. And as soon as you reach to the US, they'll give you a credit card. Check that product out. I think it will be super useful for you and the rates and everything is much cheaper than as compared to others when you're transferring money from India to the US. Uh, another question, how to deal with expensive medical bills in America? The same girl asked, please talk about international health insurance while waiting for OPT. Okay, few things. A friend of mine actually went through a very life-changing surgery recently um, and he, I think his bills were just around 100k even after insurance american health insurance is messed up there is a lot of videos i'm going to leave a couple of videos on how american health insurance works and why it is a scam and how you can save money but the basic idea is if you are getting a bill do not pay the first bill ask them for an itemized bill if you're going to ask them for an itemized bill they will the bill cost is going to come down then ask them like, hey, I'm a student, I might not be able to pay back this bill. They might reduce your bill to even more. Now, if you are a student and let's say you don't have a social security number and you have a huge bill, you can pay it in installments or you can let it go to the collection agency. 
when it goes to a collection agency it does hurt your credit score but if you don't have any credit score i don't know how it works but i'm not i don't think you need to worry about it let's say you don't have a credit score and you have now after collections and everything you have still like a $5000 bill uh you can pay the collection or it will go to another collection agency this chain keeps going so hospital itemized bill they'll reduce your bill if you're not able to pay they might reduce your bill even more then it goes to a collection agency where it's encouraged that you do pay that bill because uh it's a nightmare my best advice to you is make sure you do all of your checkups before you come to the us uh second thing get a good insurance don't go for this like third party insurances which are just there to like you know just so that the minimum requirements of your university gets checked off get the university insurance because that will usually cover most of your bills and try to add dental and vision if you have problems in dental and vision and try saving money i have a health savings account where i put a lot of my money in and that way i am able to have some savings in case some emergency occurs gym culture in the us uh, i have been pretty regular to the gym these days so um gym culture is nothing different than it is in india first of all nobody is going to like look down upon you i think in india a lot of people are judging you if you're doing something wrong maybe or if you're not Yeah, if you're not doing something correctly they will judge you but like they make these faces and i don't like the trainers in india also like a lot of old school trainers i haven't worked out in a gym in india but here everybody is like really encouraging they're doing their own stuff mostly so you really don't have to worry about it wipe the machines that's the biggest thing that's the gym culture here incoming fall student and i'm feeling overwhelmed and alone did you feel the same back then yes I did feel overwhelmed for sure first of all because you know you're taking such a big loan amount you are going to feel overwhelmed there's no question about that but I have my cousin sister who lives in Chicago which made it much easier for me to transition to the US same goes for my sister I was there when she came in so if there's somebody like a relative of yours it makes things much easier but if it is if that's not the case don't worry about it uh there you're going to find a lot of like like minded people a lot of people from your own uh, community so you would not feel that out of place feeling overwhelmed about the loan amount makes complete sense i feel that way as well and i felt that as well when i was still paying my loan back when i was working my first priority and only focus was paying the loan back and like, the, like let's say my brain is 100% 10% of my brain was always uh gone towards like i need to pay this loan back every time i'm making a payment i need to pay this loan back now as a student you're also overwhelmed by like hey what will happen if i don't get a job just keep reminding yourself i need to do what i need to do to be better at what i do and job will follow right like if you do everything you're supposed to do it will be easier and if you put yourself out there more it will make life easier for you trust me on that do you invest i do invest uh i have invested i know maybe like $10000 not that much but i have a 401k which is through my company and my company puts in some money so every month uh some amount of my some percentage of my paycheck goes into 401k and my company ma- like half matches it so let's say i'm putting $1000 they'll put $500 every month into my 401k I can't take that money out. Uh I have a Robinhood account. I can leave you the link. Uh I have only invested in like really big tech companies so Google, Facebook, uh Tesla would be one, Apple would be one. Really the big ones and I've invested in some ETF funds. Now, uh I have invested in some crypto also. Crypto is down right now but I knew that I'm not going to get that money back so I just invested it regardless and I've recently opened a Roth IRA account as well so you can look into it. I might make a video with somebody who does investing full time and maybe that will help you better. Another question best place for south indian food in phoenix my favorite place in phoenix for south indian food is this place called woodlands it's in chandler If you haven't been to it you're missing out a lot I have not had better dosas or at least a sambar vadas anywhere else than Woodlands uh, I don't even know if there's any other place in Phoenix 
other than that and even today i'm gonna go drive to phoenix after this video is done and everything and i'm gonna go have dinner there that's my priority when i go to phoenix another question how do you deal with loneliness how to stay alone in a home with a remote job this is a problem especially for remote jobs and i've seen it much more common among students who are doing um, who don't go to the office does work from home i don't have my wife right now my wife's in michigan for three months and i'm alone in this house as of now right um but just because i go to the office i meet a lot of people at the office it makes it easier for me for you guys who are working from home i would encourage you to like take part in some kind of club a friend of mine um he works in north carolina he's a part of like a football club and he goes to these clubs after the football game or football match because he's able to hang out with a lot more people and a lot of companies have encouraged uh, office workers to come twice a week to the office to make it more sociable and to like meet new people as well so try doing that if you're in a remote place doing a remote job honestly move to a different state where you have friends because it can really take over you and i do not recommend it because i've seen so many cases of depression when students are doing remote jobs and they are in remote place just because let's say a lot of your friends are in austin go move back to austin and do the remote job from there there's no reason for you to be in like alabama or some remote state uh, for that case plus having a roommate always always help when i was doing my full time job in phoenix i had a roommate and uh, my roommate used to do remote job he used to work from home even though his office was 5 minutes away he used to work from home but he never felt lonely because i was there so having a roommate helps a lot is it necessary to get a travel insurance and health insurance for the first few weeks travel insurance yes i would recommend getting a travel insurance there was a quote from a video which i was watching about american health insurance scams uh the video said the best insurance you can get is the insurance you never have to use so remember that get an insurance just in case it's always just in case just in case you get sick at the airport just in case you get sick at the flight you would need that insurance you need that insurance to claim back that money and health insurance for the first few week if you're getting insurance from your uh, university your insurance kicks in as soon as you land in the, in the us and you can check that with your university that is that the case or not but i believe if you are taking an insurance from any of the universities it will kick in right away international student financing options on f1 visa with no ssn if you don't have a ssn you won't be able to pick up money here personal loans are also high interest rate so i wouldn't recommend personal loans but if you are an international student the best option would be second year financing i'm going to leave a link up in description for a video prodigy finance is a great option empower has options of hans has options uh, these three offer second year loans i know leap finance also offers second year loans but you you can check on that those are two three i think asking for a friend would be a better option but anything second year is a nightmare for everybody going for fall 23 that's what i tell them that hey always get approved for a bigger amount than what you would need for your education just because you don't have to disburse that loan you can leave that loan as is with the bank you can only disburse the amount you need that way in case you need it the money is there for you another question purva asks scared about coming to the us this fall any tips on keeping the anxiety at bay same thing know your goal know why you started this journey first and then just keep at it keep at it make a lot of friends put yourself out there keeping busy helps i made two videos or two three videos about anxiety i fell into like this whole anxious depression a depressing pool in 2020 when covid was happening i was like what the fuck am i doing with my life um it was a very difficult time for me those 4 5 months i was like you know the youtube channel is not doing well covid's here i'm not making as much money in my regular job what is going to happen my recommendation for you is watch those 3 4 videos and see what you relate with i started going out a lot like i would do treks i would do hiking um i would try to like put myself out there go meet friends go to some sort of activity just so that i get out of it uh talking to a therapist helps i know a lot of people think therapist is not a bad like it's a bad thing i have done therapy 
uh, I have friends who have done therapy. It's nothing wrong. You're just talking to a person about the problems you're facing. And sometimes it's better to talk to that person than a friend because a friend will always give you advice. Therapist usually like try finding solutions through your answers. So what you are saying, it, it always helps. Trust me on that. It always helps to try taking therapy if you can. If you are feeling like scared or if you're feeling uh, emotionally drained and once you come to the US also if you're feeling drained I'm sure universities have a lot of programs where they help students if they're feeling anxious or depressed. Can you talk about transferring university with advisor as a PhD student? It is not impossible to do this but it is definitely difficult to do it. What happens is when you're coming for a PhD you are actually not being chosen by the university you are being chosen by the professor so if a professor is choosing you, that means they are going to be funding you as well. Taking a transfer is a nightmare. Uh, I've seen friends who have considered it. If you have a good relationship with another professor and you have a word from them, like if they can vouch for you that, yeah, I'm going to give this person funding, go for it. But otherwise, if your advisor is not the one, try considering somebody from the same university first because as soon as you do a transfer from a certain university to another then it becomes a logistical nightmare for immigration as well because you'll have to get your i-20 changed once you go back to india will have to get another stamp on your passport so those kind of things hurt how to stay productive amidst bad mental health you can't stay productive don't beat yourself that hey i need to stay productive what should i be doing it will not work like that. The idea of you having a bad mental health and then trying to stay productive, you're making it worse for yourself. Try finding the root cause of the bad mental health first. Try if it's a breakup, if it's a family issue, or if it's some money, try finding the root cause. Try writing the points which is making you feel that way and then tackle the productivity part of it. Try taking a couple of weeks off. So. Um, it's not happening right now, but when my wife's here, what we usually do is like we work throughout the week. We sometimes I'm working weekends, she's working weekends. She's a PhD scholar, um, but we always take Friday off. That way we are able to take a break. Sometimes students are so much into their education and studies. It makes it difficult for them to like take a break. So just make sure you do that. Is it worth spending 50K on a master's at this point of time? Yes. It's always worth it. 50K is not that big of amount. Plus, students who are affected right now, or at least were affected last year, 2022 spring and fall 2023, things will pick up again, end of this year and next fall. Why? Because companies will still need to hire people. Com people leave. People join companies and people leave companies. So they're always looking to hire people. What happened with COVID? COVID was an anomaly, right? Like they scaled up really quick and now they're trying to stabilize the whole position. Uh, I'm going to leave a link to a post from Nikhil Kamath. He posted on Instagram on how companies blitzscaled first, then fired a lot of people. And now they're trying to like maintain that sustained growth. So it's important for you to understand that it's happening and jobs will be there when you're coming next year. But the problem where it comes is that there's so many international students. How do you make yourself stand out? Like that's, that's the biggest question. Tell us about your cats. Okay, I will tell about my cats. My cat, one of my cats sitting right here, one of them probably sitting upstairs, but um, we adopted our cats in one in 2020, or one in 2019 and another one in 2020. Uh, the cats are pretty chill animal. Uh, they do their thing. We have automated most of the things. Their litter gets cleaned and their food gets fed to them and they have a water fountain as well. Um, so, they are very low-key human beings and they are great house pets because first of all you don't have to take them outside for anything any play they watch birds every day we have to take them to wet every year for some kind of um, vaccinations and a regular checkup basically but otherwise like cats are pretty chill if you're considering an affordable animal i would say um, cats are the one but if you're a for if you're looking for an animal which gives you the love of a dog you won't find that in cats cats is a different kind of love and dogs is a different kind of love it's just two different entities altogether and that's it thank you so much guys for watching this video i hope you like this one um my hair is still a mess because i didn't take a shower today but i hope you like this one uh, hope a lot of your questions got answered and until then i'll see you in the next one take care everyone